in the beginning. We had piston-driven aircraft. The problem is, they didn't fly very far. They didn't carry many people. And they weren't always that reliable. But it didn't stop some very clever people writing down ideas how we could make these aircraft fly further, faster and higher. In the 50s and the 60s, aircraft engineers could speak to each other via direct dial telephone. It may have taken a while, but it enabled engineers to exchange ideas, to agree, to disagree, to pour over plans, to introduce the jet engine to civil aviation. Yep, the jet engine was firmly established as the power plant for future civil aviation. But it didn't stop there. In the 60s and the 70s, the jet engine was refined to make it fly faster, higher, more reliable, safer. The late 60s saw the advent of the giant 747, the queen of the skies. But for industry aviation man, this still wasn't enough. He wanted something cheaper to transport the masses around Europe. to the early 70s. Package holidays are in full swing. General Franco is building high-rise hotels in Spain at huge pace. People are visiting exotic destinations such as Benidorm, Marbella, Costa del Sol and they did it in their millions and they loved it. The problem is that the aircraft of the era, the Trident, the Boeing 727s, cost a lot to run, three engines, three crew. Following a series of damaging oil crises throughout the 70s, industry aviation man was getting nervous once again. He wanted a brand new type of versatile aircraft that could operate twin engine, twin crew on many different routes. Well in 1983, this was Boeing's answer, the mighty 757, and still in service some 40 years later. Suddenly, businessman could fly to a meeting anywhere in Europe, talk about himself all day long, and then fly home again for dinner, and all for the price of filling up a family saloon car. Meanwhile, the aviation manufacturers continued to experiment with new designs, faster, higher, cheaper. Airbus burst onto the scene with their Airbus A300 and 310 successfully launched, and quickly soon after in 1994, the Airbus 330. Quickly gaining a reputation for comfort and reliability, it even managed to persuade the Russians to break with tradition and buy Western technology, and the Airbus 330 was nothing if not leading edge. Into the 2010s and Boeing's 777 remains the long-haul airliner of choice for many an international airline. And jet engines continue to be refined flying more efficiently, further, becoming more reliable. This man is explaining to his colleague just how reliable modern jet engines are. She removes her glasses in dramatic disbelief. And he says, I know, I can't explain it. They operate just like magic. Sadly, in the 2010s, we started to see the demise of the 747 as operators increasingly turned to cheaper alternatives the twin-engine alternatives. But there was a new kid on the block, the Boeing 787. With more than a thousand sold since 2007, this has been a tremendous success for Boeing. Love it or hate it, 
the 787 was the aircraft that gave Airbus executives sleepless nights. You see, as far as Airbus was concerned, the future of long haul was very much in their Airbus A380. And we all know how that story went. But Airbus knew they had to respond, and respond they did, bringing us this beautiful Airbus A350, made of composite materials, lighter, with fuel efficient engines. This aircraft could fly 8,000 miles. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Airbus A350. Progress peaked. Morning all, start of wide body weekend here at Heathrow. The weather's looking good. Airbus 330, 350 and 380 this weekend. Very excited. If you don't have any access to British Airways lounges here at Terminal 5 at Heathrow, I can recommend an alternative if you happen to have an American Express, Centurion or Platinum card. The Plaza Premium Lounge is excellent. Unfortunately, they do charge you for premium alcohol. Other than that, it's a great alternative to the British Airways lounges. It scores 4 out of 5. Today's video is actually made up of two flights. I fly to Madrid and back on Iberia Airbus 350 aircraft. Whilst I do try two separate Airbus A350s, the onboard product is exactly the same and both aircraft are around 12 months old. with Neil on the Airbus A350 with Iberia and we are about halfway down to Madrid now with about an hour to go so far so good in premium economy the seats very comfortable uh, but it's Neil's first time on an Airbus A350 so what do you make to it Neil? yeah really nice it's um, well, obviously first time as you said on, my, on the A350 and very quiet very smooth probably similar to the A380 I'd say in yeah. experience yeah. Uh, probably a bit noisier on takeoff yeah. from my experience but I'm uh, really enjoying it so got a juice which we wouldn't normally get on BA oh, and uh, juice, yeah. Yeah. yeah so all good very good very good
Bienvenidos a Madrid. Mantengan sus cinturones de seguridad abrochados hasta que se apaguen. also like to take this opportunity to say a huge thanks to my much appreciated Patreon supporters, people like James, Joe, Kieran, Joshua, as well as all my other Patreon supporters, help me to bring these videos to you every month. super quiet and super efficient Rolls-Royce engines doing their thing, flying us down to Madrid. I must say, I'm really impressed with the Airbus A350. So, toilet cam time. What would the flight be without a trip to the toilet? A video of the Iberia Airbus 350 toilet, you know, if you've seen one toilet, you've kind of seen them all on aircraft, I guess, these days. Um, <laughs> what can I tell you about a toilet? Uh, well, it's got a sink. With electronic buttons. And it's got a toilet. And so... Uh, yeah, so so far it's a nice flight actually. Um, I've only ever been on one of the Airbus 350 and that's when BA launched theirs uh, on this route actually from Heathrow down to Madrid just for the uh, colleague familiarisation flights. Uh, but this one's quite nice. Um, we got upgraded to premium economy as I say, uh, free of charge. At the time of booking one of the party got an offer yesterday to upgrade for £44 up to business class so he's loading it up there this morning with the complimentary lunch and alcohol. Neil and I having our complimentary glass of pineapple juice, which is a bit different. Um, but overall, yeah, I mean, you can't fault it. It's a nice, quiet aircraft. Dare I say it, I do prefer it to the uh, 787, but that's probably just a personal view. So yeah, toilet cap. What else can I tell you? fly over the snow-capped Pyrenees mountains into French airspace, I sit back, relax and simply enjoy this stunning view from this stunning aircraft. So as I sit back and relax, enjoying this winter's afternoon sunset as we descend into Heathrow, I reflect on the Airbus A350 and has it actually piqued the abilities of civil aviation? Well, for the time being I would argue that yes, it is the most technologically advanced aircraft that you can fly on. That said, the next generation of airliners will just be around the corner and there's clearly a desire to move away from fossil fuels. So the future is very exciting for aviation. But, yep, the Airbus 350, for the time being, is where you want to be. So before you go, let me tell you about next week's video, which is celebrating the return of the Airbus A380 to the skies. And I've got a really good prize giveaway. So if you'd like to be in with a chance to win, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. You'll see when the next video launches. Best of luck. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.